Kaboofu Podcast. This is the Checker Knights, but you can call me Brian. I'm Daniel. I'm known as Mr. Kaboof. And this is Coast of Funny 13, also known as Will. All right, now today we have something special to talk about. We got some new rumors from PlayStation and Xbox, respectively, coming out, new systems. What do you guys think? Well, I know it's really interesting. Like, we talked about how there, there's a the whole thing about the used games controversy. Mm-hmm where they're trying to block used games from being distributed. There is a rumor right now, because I don't know when the hell this podcast is coming out, but February 20th, Sony's supposed to announce something big, and the big rumor right now in the industry is that it's going to be the new PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And there's been all these specs being leaked out to the blogs and stuff, and one of the biggest things right now is that there might be a service for the PlayStation users where you have to stream games. Like I said before, I understand the fact that Sony's losing money and that they obviously need to stop like used games because it really does hurt the their industry personally but i just i see it backfiring i see people not wanting to go out buy these new systems this economy a and b have to deal with all this bullshit with the games where you know you you can't the people borrow them right like you can't trade them back like some people don't research games enough and i guess you know Mm. If you if you don't research games, you know it's your fault. But some people just they end up not liking something, and what are you supposed to do? Just have that, have all that waste of money? Yeah, it's gonna be stuck with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw a survey that said like sixty percent of people who were surveyed said they would not buy a system that blocks used games. Right. Like I, I wouldn't buy one. I probably wouldn't. Mm-hmm. It just makes it a hassle. Nintendo lucked out because they they came out with their next gen system before this whole big deal about used game. Well, I shouldn't say before because the PS Vita is doing that, right? It's doing what? Like, Oh no, they're not blocking used games. Never mind. I, no, uh, they they just changed out of UMD. But yeah, Nintendo coming out like before this whole big deal because even uh, Microsoft and Xbox, there's there rumors circulating that they're gonna get uh, blocked used games too. Yeah, Microsoft. There's also rumors with the new Xbox that they're gonna do the same thing basically. Yeah, I don't know. Like the used game, the used game industry is an interesting thing. You know, pro consumer, anti corporation. I guess. I just like I said, I see it backfiring because with such an extensive library for the Xbox 360 and PS3 respectively. I just see the new systems coming out, price drops coming for the PS3 and Xbox 360 mm-hmm. again, and people saying, if I don't have a system like PS3 or Xbox 60, let's just get one of those and get into the used games for them because there's going to be huge price drops. Yeah. I just see that happening. You know. That's why I did when the 3DS came out, basically. I just bought a crap load of DS games. Right, and I mean, there's enough games to satiate people. Like, I'll, no one has time to play all the games that are out, anyways. Yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't even remember the last time I bought a new game. I think it's been like years. Was it just buy one? Was that Tales of the Abyss used? Yes. Oh. Oh, man. Anyway. I think the, f- the last new game I bought mm. was maybe Twilight Princess for the GameCube. Oh, wow. Well, Twilight well, Princess is a good buy. It was. <laughs> it was a good buy. I think it's worth it. In in the rumors, was there was there anything else controversial with uh, Sony or Microsoft coming out? Well, that's a big thing. Like the big controversy is the whole mm-hmm. used games uh, thing. Someone from like uh, there was a comment I read from someone in Canada, I think, where they're complaining like if that streaming service becomes like a mandatory thing, it's gonna be a problem for people in other countries besides the U.S. Because we have a lot of bandwidth to go around. You know, we actually have options for like really fast internet. While in some countries like Australia or Canada, their internet's capped. So, like, you know, every bit of data is uh, precious. And there's countries like Korea that's just, just super internet. Just made of internet. <laughs> God. Why can't we get some of that internet? <laughs> but, like, you know, it could be a problem for some countries. Right. Once again, it's... I, I'm against it, but how else are they supposed to try to fix this huge money loss that they're having? Like, do you... Like, can you think of anything that would help them? Better games. I don't know. Sony's hemorrhaging money. Yeah. I mean, they they really messed up with the Vita. There's a lot of problems with the Vita. See, I, I can't say it suffered from having poor launch titles because it had a lot of quality titles. Just things that there were a lot of things that people already played or planned to play on the PS3 instead. Most of the games on the Vita are downloadable PS1 titles and PS2 titles that people already own, and now they're paying extra money to download it again. Exactly. Yeah. Like Brian, you don't you don't need that super expensive Persona machine. I don't. You get those games elsewhere. Right. Right. I mean, the 3DS is finally starting to rebound. That's good for. Yeah, the Nintendo. 3DS is having a fantastic year this year. Yeah, it's yep. all just for the games that's coming out. And we're yeah. not biased because we all own one or anything. No, <laughs> of course not. It's not like I'm driving one of my friends out to buy one himself tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> God. But that should say something if we all own one. Yeah, like. I'd say at least half of the people I normally hang out with own a 3DS now. 
Yeah, I would, I didn't think like a year ago that the 3DS would be this successful because I really thought it was going to go under. Well, I was, always had faith. Uh, it was scary in the beginning, though. It was scary. I mean, there was that big price drop within, what, four or five months after coming out? Yeah, like right after my mom bought two. <laughs> but it turned out to be a good move. Hey, thank you, Mom. I love the 3DS. <laughs> shout out to Will's mom. Yeah, shout out my mom. <laughs> She's probably busy playing Harvest Moon. She won't let me play. <laughs> Damn it, I want to play, it's hard, so good. Yeah, but right. I mean like the first few months of the 3DS coming out, there was what, Steel Diver, Pilot Wings, whatever games yeah. were out back then, and there wasn't any big titles, and now Nintendo's just like... Unloading. Unloading. Unleashing the beast. It's like, man, hey, next month, you want Luigi's Mansion? Bam! You want some Castlevania? Bam! We got everything. New new uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? I hear you want that too. <laughs> new Pokemon game this fall? Yeah, you can have it. Man. It's cool. I hear you guys like this thing called Rune Factory? Man, summer! Bam! Damn, they just... God descended and gave us Animal Crossing, you know? That's <laughs> true. Man, the only way this would be even more perfect is if they released, like, Mother or something in the U.S. Mother 4? Jesus. Or if okay. they finally brought Mother 3 over. Yeah, that would be the bombshell. Hey, the, the, didn't Nintendo promise to start supporting some of that uh, new uh, the key the games. software? Oh, that special software, the key games. Maybe Bravely Default, some other stuff. Bravely Default I, and Dragon Quest Seven, the remake. I'm expecting to come over. I'm hearing. Brian, need to calm down. There's rumors that Bravely Default's going to come over. And there's a strong chance that it is. I don't see why it shouldn't, because its spiritual predecessor for Heroes of Light came over, mm -hmm. and Square Enix is pretty good about bringing stuff over. Yeah, they're just not good about making Kingdom Hearts Three. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not even get into that. My god. Like, Square Enix is pretty confident in what they make will sell in America. Like, something like The World Ends With You, you wouldn't think would be popular, but it is. Yeah, it turned out to be a pretty, like, a bestseller, wasn't it? Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, my sister really liked it. Nintendo's good, right, guys? Yeah, it's just the difference in games, I think, between Sony and Nintendo that's making the difference. I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to with uh, the consoles, anyway. The games. Mm -hmm. I can go on the internet with the PS Vita all I want, but you don't have a computer for that. Exactly. Now, it's just this weird thing where everyone's trying to have consoles connected to the internet, be like involved in every social aspect of life now, like connecting to all these social networks, and all that yada yada crap. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of diluting the game. Video games are my escape from all that. I don't want to be social on my video games. It's the last thing I want to do. Exactly. If I want to be social, I'll go to online play. Get away from my and me time. That's not social. You just yell at people. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty weird. It's a weird time. But I guess they're looking at maybe the iPad and see how well that is. What that's doing. Yeah, but that kind of appeals to a different audience. It does. That's probably what they're trying to do, is appeal to a wider audience by having all this different abilities. Mm -hmm. They might save a little money by not doing that. Uh, it could. <laughs> On the note of online play, uh, when the Super Smash Brothers game comes out for the 3DS... You better buy it as well, Brian, so you play online. Yeah, I know. Is it going to have online support? Sure. I would assume so. If Daniel, if we can play Dead or Alive Dimensions, they're going to let us play like Super Smash Brothers. Online? <laughs> yeah, dude. 3DS online is not bad either. It's yeah. better than the Wii. It's one of the high points for like Animal Crossing, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nintendo's been kind of slow uh, embracing the whole internet function uh, functionality. Mm -hmm. The friend code system. That, that pisses me off. Yeah, the whole friend code thing. I, I thought they would have streamlined that by now. Are they still doing that for the Wii U? Anyone know? Uh, I think they still have friend codes. Really? They probably do. Yeah. Man, just keep it simple. Like, you know, send Are, a Do they have a Nintendo ID? I'm not sure. Dale, you have the internet open. Uh, yes, we have the internet open. Yeah. I mean, assuming if 3DS has friend codes, then Wii U probably does. By the way, I know, because obviously the announcement didn't make for games to be out right now, but how long do you think it's going to take for the Wii U to start to take off? Because that, that's still hurting right now. Give it another year. Um, another year. Until, until either this holiday season until or after. Comes out. <laughs> Do you think they will they'll announce something new at E3? I well, it's E3. They'll, they'll announce something. Or at least have gameplay footage or something. Like, once they announce like the new Zelda, that's when I think it'll take off. Day one, Wii U, I told you, I'll buy it when the new Zelda comes out. But then they announced all that other stuff, and I, I might go premature on that. <laughs> <laughs> Or if a new Super Smash Bros. comes out or is announced. But they said that won't happen for a while. Yeah. I don't blame them. People still play in Brawl. People still play Melee. We're good. People still play Super Smash Brothers. We still have our fix. So it says here for the Wii U, you do not need a friend code anymore. You just have to, uh, let's see here, exchange IDs. Okay. Alright. So they're finally doing it. So yeah, they're streamlining it a little, a little more. The catch is you can either exchange IDs or do a one-way request. I guess you just add someone. I don't know. I'm better than friend codes. You know, yeah. If we had a Wii U, we would know. 
Hey, th- there was no reason for me to buy it initially. I'm still pl- buying games for my Wii. You're right. Pandora's Tower coming out next month. I'm pretty sure you're the only one at our store, at the GameStop here, that uh, with a pre-order for that. It's okay, that makes you special. <laughs> I mean, when I went there, Ali didn't even know what that there was still a Wii, U ga- or a Wii game coming out. It came as a total surprise. Just for me. Just for you. I've been wanting Pandora's Tower for years. The only copy that's going to be sent here, just for you. Just for Will. Only one to America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole reason for Operation Rainfall. Uh, give Will action RPGs. Dude, action RPGs, that... Oh, oh man. I need to calm down. I'm too excited. N- Nintendo's got me all hot, flustered. All hot and bothered. <laughs> yeah, dude. I can't handle all this Nintendo stuff. Oh, so yeah, Sony and Microsoft are still kind of a thing. See, I don't know what uh, my, uh, like Microsoft's problem with used gaming is, because their video game division, like Xbox, was very profitable last year, like last fiscal year, and as stated before, it was the only profitable section of the company. I, I would think that because of, from a popularity standpoint, they could really get a leg up on Sony by not doing that. I, given it's still just a rumor, but you know what I mean. I, I don't I don't see an issue, any issue like people are gonna buy Halo. That's that's the thing with. America and Xbox, you're gonna buy Halo, people are gonna buy Gears of War and stuff like that. They're fine right now. I actually saw an article that said, like, this past some odd period of time, that the Xbox 360 actually had the best selling, like, in terms of amount of games, they were the best selling. Mm. So, they're not doing poorly. Yeah, that's why I'm confused as to why they would take that. Because, like I said, I just, I think they could really try to, they and Nintendo together could really close out Sony in the gaming market by singling them out as the assholes, you know? Uh, there's people saying that blocking used games would probably be a, be a big mistake. Mm-hmm. What, this is just, a really big turnoff. Yeah, th- that's really the biggest issue. Plus, like, the whole game streaming and stuff. I know pe- people have always... Alright, even back in the day, people were like, oh, MP3s came out. There, no one's going to buy CDs anymore. People still buy CDs. People are still going to buy games with downloadable versions because people like having that physical copy. Exactly. You know? Daniel, you're a... Uh, Quite the fan of physical copies. Yes, I prefer <laughs> having the physical copy. When the apocalypse arrives and the internet is destroyed, I'm gonna have all the physical copies I need. Now the only question is, will there be electricity? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, what I mean, like, yeah, in case something happens or some crazy thing happens where I lose all my data, all my saved games and whatnot, I'll have the physical disc rather than like if it was on a hard drive or saved to a cloud or whatever, and then lose yeah. it. Like, oh, uh, when Duke's, like, connector between his Wii and the hard drive broke down and he couldn't access any of his games, that sucks. Yeah. It makes you wonder how many people think like that, though. Or if you're just the minority. Well, I guess more and more people are starting to embrace the whole digital thing. But I still prefer the old-fashioned having the CD in my mm-hmm. console thing. I would say that I do agree that I like it, but I see the whole storage space point. Like, I'm starting to run out of space for all my junk. I say junk but I value it more than a lot of things. <laughs> I, don't, I almost broke my back saving my computer. Worthwhile. Because everyone's all about being like going digital, and that's the cool thing to do, and like the more streamlined thing to do, and I think that's more appealing to most people. Right. Like I, would, I love the idea of having a bunch of stuff on a hard drive. It's just I fear losing that hard drive and losing everything. Yeah. It's, it's a fear deep inside. Although it's better than having like a giant container full of discs and shit. I mean, they, they got their pros and cons. Uh huh. Obviously, like I said, CDs still exist. MP3s were supposed to destroy them years ago. It's just what are you more afraid of? Your computer, your hard drive crashing, or your house being set on fire? Uh, I don't know about you, but if my house gets set on fire, I'm making trips up and down the stairs. <laughs> They'll be like, "No, don't go in." I'm like, "Listen, guys, I burns will heal." I can't get another copy of that game. I'm not buying Steambot Chronicles again. <laughs> All right, so you guys, you guys need to calm down. I'm a large man. Those firefighters better really hold me back. <laughs> like I, I just start stuffing stuff in containers and run. See, that's that's one thing about the like. Don't take anything with you when there's a fire. First off, my computer is never far away from me. Like it's always by my bed. If someone said, "Don't grab your computer," I would just say, "Fuck you," as I grab it and walk away. They're like, no, don't do it, don't do it. I'd hit them with my computer. Exactly. Telling me to leave my computer. I don't know what they think about my life force over here. <laughs> yeah, this is our life now. But if I'm losing everything, if I'm losing my house and all my other stuff, mm-hmm. I need my computer to comfort me. So would you prioritize that? Yes. Like, everything in your house, you would take your computer with you? The first if I can only take yes. one thing with me in my house, it'd be my laptop. 
laptop. Yeah. I have game systems. I have games. I have figures. I have ponies. I have books and stuff. It's just the, the computer, it, it's with the internet, you know, it's an entrance to everything in the world, you know? Also, I spend the bulk of my time when I'm not working or sleeping on set computer. Even when we hang out, we're all on our computers. Right now. I, all right. That's a good question. Your house is burning down. You you can only physically take one thing with you. What is it? I said computer. Brian? Oh, man. Man, if my cat's in my house, I have to take my cat. No no living things. Only inanimate objects. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, my computer. <laughs> Daniel. Thank God. Thing. Exactly. You, and anyone who's out there like, what about pictures? What if it's not... I, I, just, not... I just saw a spider on the table. Oh. Where is it? I, want, I it's, should kill it's it for near Brian. The, it's near the Ricola. It's dead. Dead now. I got you, Brian. Thanks. Got you. Now, if there's a slug, you better handle that shit. <laughs> uh, you owe me. I'll, I'll remember, remember right. that. I'll, I'll remember. All right. I'll but check yeah, that mind. Those of you are like, where's the sentimental value? You don't save your baby pictures. I'll say that. All right. There's nothing more sentimental than a than your computer Google. that's your friend. Your, <laughs> right. Google search history. Like I said, all right. First off, this computer... And I, we're like this. All right, you guys can't see this. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers because we're like this, man. Will's crossing his fingers. All right, because anything that protects my secrets the way my computer does, that, that's a bond. You can't find that in people, okay? There's no way if someone knew what I searched that they would keep the secrets to the level with which my computer does. No one knows me better than my computer. Right? It's, it's, just, it's just the truth. It knows me like that. You know, we've been through so much. <sighs> Thank you, computer. <laughs> Thank you. I spent more time on my computer than I spent with you guys. It's true. <laughs> I see my computer screen more than I see anything. This computer costs more than my car. It does. I've seen it drop once already. I can't believe Lauren dropped my computer. I don't remember that. Uh, it's, a good thing remember this that. Is, it's a good thing this Mac's a tank. Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't crack or anything or gets a dented. No, dude, it's all good. It's yeah. about cracked the I, floor. It was a loud thud. When, it was a hardwood floor and it, like, thudded. Mm-hmm. That, that hardwood floor needs to watch out. My computer's coming through. <laughs> My computer's like me. You better watch out. It's going to plow right through. God. All right. Let's stop talking about how much we love our computers. It's getting weird. <laughs> yeah. It's getting a little weird. It's getting a little Happy sad. late Valentine's Day. <laughs> computer. <laughs> Yeah, I spent Valentine's with my computer. I was playing, I played Duel of the Roses on my computer. Like, I hooked up my PS2 to the capture card just so I could play on it. <laughs> I didn't want to use the TV for some reason. <laughs> just for novelty. Just, for, just spend some alone time with the computer. You know, Quality time. Going through France, collecting the rose cards. You know, very Valentine's themed. Very romantic. That is sweet. See, but Brian, you seemed a little more normal. You said you'd save your cat until I said inanimate objects only, you know. Like, the only thing I have in my house, really, is my computer that belongs to me. Well, that cat isn't really yours, either. I know, but still. Might as well be yours. Is it still upstairs? Yeah. The cat oh. just hangs around here, like a unemployed uncle. How is it afraid of us, man? I don't know. If you hang around here long enough, it'll just get used to you. I'm not an intimidating person. Does it have a name? Or did you give it a name? They, it apparently has a name. Do you know it? Yeah, it's called Timba. Timba? Tim yeah. Do you call it Timba? I don't call it. I just say cat. <laughs> cat. Hey, it comes come to here. you. Yeah, not really. It doesn't listen to me. Well, because you don't call it by its name. It didn't yeah. even respond to its name. You should call it Simba and see if it still responds. <laughs> and if it does, just hold it up. You know, glory. <laughs> my, that's what my mom used to call it before we knew its name, just because of the way it stands or sits on the fence, like just peeking out on the hill. Dude, that that cat stares me down. Like, I come to pick you up at night, we're all going to go hang out, it's just glaring at me. <laughs> Pet it as you leave, it's still glaring at me, like, it only turns its head as I go, damn. <clears throat> that cat's pretty tough. Smart, I think. It's going to beat up those raccoons. I don't know, apparently it gets into fights sometimes. Jeez. With other cats. <laughs> <Does it> win? <laughs> and I think it loses. Oh, oh. That's, that's not nice. Wow. No wonder he's so... What kind of giant cats are beating up your cat? I don't know, the other cats in the neighborhood are smaller. Are they feisty though? Yeah, probably. probably. A little more agile. Your cat's maybe, pretty big. Maybe your cat doesn't know it's big. Like, it has that small cat mentality. <laughs> maybe. It's just a lot of fur. It is a lot of fur. I, I, maybe it does have that mentality, because it looked at us and got and just tried to walk away. <clears throat> yeah, it scared you guys. Yeah, we were talking about video games, weren't we? No. No, no. we were talking about Valentine's. We were talking about oh. cat Valentine's. <laughs> we did... We talked a lot about video games recently, guys. It's true, and we all love video games. But... There's something else that we do a lot of on this blog, and let's talk about anime. Really? We do that a lot? Yeah. A lot more than uh, 
I had planned on in the beginning. <laughs> We're at about the halfway point in this new anime season. Yes. So basically, <clears throat> people should know whether or not they like a series by now. Whether they're in or out. And I think we should talk about uh, what we think of the anime season thus far, you know, things we're following and whatnot. Any strong feelings you have about anything, guys? Strong feelings. Like, mm. what, what is your favorite anime this season so far? Ooh. If you had to pick one. Do you count stuff that's crossed over from last season? Sure. Um, I'd probably have to go with Sakurasa no Pat. Yeah, it's, it is something to look forward to every week. That's like the thing I look forward to the most every week. It gets me through my Monday nights. Man, Sheena does not act like she doesn't know what love is anymore. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely my favorite character now. Uh, other than, uh, Sarta's sister. <laughs> you oh, just use like the transitions. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> Dude, she's so funny. <laughs> she made the celebration ball. <laughs> I felt... I felt so bad, and then she started freaking out, and then I started laughing. <laughs> yeah, I don't like how they're just dangling the possibility of him being with Aoyama in your face. It's like, oh, it could totally happen. It such totally a, happens. It's such a cock tease for that ship. Like, I like that, but I don't dislike Sheena, so, you know, mixed feelings. Normally, it gets to the point where, like, I dislike some of the other characters, so I don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm like, man, he has a machine. It's, it's all good. Like, all the characters in the show are pretty likable, except maybe Sorita. He's okay. It's all right. Yeah. Daniel, uh, did you, have you caught up at all? No, it's Sakurasa. All <laughs> right, so let's spoil stuff for Daniel. So, sure. uh, last week, how about that, uh... <laughs> no. Sorita kisses his sister. Yeah. He he, go, he goes with the incest route. <laughs> oh, well. And, anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Obviously, I'm uh, missing a lot. Right now, the second season of Boku Tomodachi Sukunai is pretty good right now. Mm. Like, it had some ups and downs. I only say downs because sometimes it gets a little extreme and not to my liking at certain points, but overall, very good. Senna's dad. Senna's dad. No, that's that's good extreme. <laughs> no. What? what? <laughs> no, that that's not good extreme at all. That is, that is some crazy stuff. But, I mean, the fact that in this season, you're actually getting development for some of the characters, because first season was just like, here's Senna, and this is her. You know, the, we're going to talk about her the whole time. Kodaka a little bit... Maybe a little Yozo at the end, but screw everyone else. Like, they didn't develop anyone. This season, Rika actually exists. She has lines, yeah. you know? She's good, too. Like, I like her character. Like, I'm glad she's getting more into it. Yozora's not the total bitch anymore. Like, she she has some more depth as a character. I feel like they're dropping the ball and send a little bit, but go, moving forward, it looks like she's going to get more screen time, you know? Yeah, I'm already liking it a lot more than first season. Yeah, it's... it's I feel like, like, this is what we needed in season one, more than just two characters, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's good. I, I'm liking it. Uh, and I really like the first season, too, so that speaks to how much I'm enjoying this one. I feel like, even though like we, I put out that poll and stuff and Sin is winning right now, I feel like there's starting to be like a shipping power shift going on. I voted other. I know I know why you voted other, Brian. It's for all the fans who <laughs> just don't have a voice right now. <laughs> well, if they would just vote. You know, it's two clicks. Yeah. Very easy to voice your opinion. I don't know that. Uh, Daniel, anything... Uh, sequel-wise or continuation from last season that you liking right now? Continuations from last season? Yeah, anything like that. Well, that's the thing. I haven't been uh, keeping up with those. I've been trying to keep up with stuff right now. All right, what's your favorite thing from this season? It might be Tomical Market, actually. I really like it. Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, really easy to watch. Uh, it's nothing too complicated. Nothing exploding in my face every five minutes. Oh, we'll wait till next episode. <laughs> Ooh. I need to see what that girl from the, I uh, the island has to say. Oh, boy. See, and I'm not... Well, that's not a spoiler, really. I, I'm not caught up right now, but... I'm not either, not but... I haven't gotten to that far, but I like it. It's good. Brian, favorite thing purely from this season, like, that started just now? P purely from this season? Um, hmm. Probably either Tomoko Market or Katora-san, both of which I'm covering. It was pretty fun. <laughs> and funny. <sighs> not the first Park Shore son. Oh, that first was... ten minutes. I like that, too, even though it was... I, it was powerful. It was well-written. It was... It was... Depression inducing though. I could I could barely handle it. I was sitting next to you guys while watching it. I was laughing. You saw me breaking down slowly. <laughs> I was laughing. You were laughing at me. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't handle that. Yeah, that was pretty intense. I, that caught me completely off guard. It caught us all off guard. <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That description did not prepare me for that. Well, what was the description? A romantic. It's just a ran romantic school comedy. A surprise for me, like, I think Mondaiji is, like, my favorite series right now that started this season. It's oh, pretty really? good. That's the one with the bunny girl, right? Yeah. And the three problem children or whatever. Yeah. It's like, they just, they took the concept from Zero no Sakaima and Dog Days and actually made a good anime. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Unlike those two series, it's actually good fighting. There's a very intense story, like, there's some very serious things going on that I did not expect. Like, we got 
we got power struggles, we got people trying to bring in other people as sex slaves, we got all kinds of crazy stuff. Wow. And is it still t- 10 episodes? It's 10 episodes, which, like I said, if Dog Days, it got two seasons, right? Or is it getting a third? Uh, it has two, at least. It has two right now. If Zono Sakama gets four seasons, if this ends in 10 episodes, I'm going to be very upset. It seems pretty popular, so I feel like it'll come back. Yeah, just got to give it a little bit. Not everything gets its second season right away. You know, not everything is Bleach and Naruto that get to run forever. Uh, rest in peace, Bleach. The anime's over. Thank God. Thank goodness. Well, the, the manga's not over, though. Thank kami Dude, The anime decided that they're going to end one arc before the last arc in the manga. Yeah, they just probably just gave up. I would have given up, too. They, they, I, the they, anime just probably just stood up and left. I don't even know they what had, they're trying to do. They had a party after they finished, like, drawing up the last episode. I think the last episode wasn't even conclusive. It's not supposed to be. It was, like, open-ended. Yeah. I don't know what they're trying to do. Like, I don't like the direction Naruto is taking, but it still makes more sense than the direction Bleach is taking. Like, there's such a huge drop It's coherent, for the most part. Bleach Brian is likes just, it. I don't know what's what? going on. Uh, not, not you, Brian. No, our no, other no, friend, Brian. Our other Brian. Our normal circle from high school had Brian, Brian, and Ryan, so things got pretty confusing, guys. You just say, Ryan, and we all turn our heads like, what? Ryan. <laughs> You try to like direct your co- like your voice at one of them and see if they pick up on the fact that you're talking about them. Maybe context could help. You know. You just have to grab us and look at us in the eyes and say Ryan, <laughs> and be like, "What?" Only well, I mean, we re- eventually resort to last names at some point. And then we just Only when we say what or who or which Brian. Yeah. And you'll have to clarify. And we got a lot of common names. We got Ryan, Brian, Brian, Daniel, Will, Mike. Albert. And then there's Schwanka. And Albert, then, Albert's not really a common name. You don't know a lot of white people. My God. <laughs> no, I guess I don't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, th- those are pretty, like, standard Western names. Schwanka. Especially Schwanka. Especially Schwanka. <laughs> <laughs> pretty standard. Yeah. When we decided to split up the anime series to cover them, I was dreading having to watch a lot of these things, like... Send you and Malium stuff because I didn't really know a lot about them going in. I just read like, oh, we got some demons, and we got some other stuff. I was actually very surprised with some of these things from this season. Pleasantly like, surprised. Yeah, pleasantly. Like, I didn't expect Malu to be what it is at all. We got heroes and war and actual story. And agriculture. Yeah, dude, potatoes and corn are gonna save the world. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. I like potatoes and corn. Um, and I'm still watching Senwa and Kagura for God knows why. <laughs> why? You're trying to desensitize yourself to Echi, right? I know, it's slowly my Echi force fields are being increased, I guess. Increased. So, like, now, like, it's just like nothing now. I'm really? so desensitized. I can handle anything now. Become more powerful <laughs> than any Echi has ever imagined. <laughs> I don't know how you sit through an episode. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's really weird. Start watching Shuffle again, like you said you would. I watched one more episode since we last met. So, does that mean you've watched three episodes? Yeah, total. What happens in the third episode? I already forgot. That was like... God. It might have been a month ago when I watched that. I've watched the series like three times, but the last time I watched it was in 2010, so it's quite a while. Alright guys, so I, I mentioned this in the car, and this is obviously something that comes up a lot, and when, when answering this question, let's try to at first at least focus on stuff from this season. I've had people ask me that, you know, haven't watched anime before, like what I would suggest to them. And it's it's difficult, like even like based on their likes, the whole cultural difference in storytelling kind of makes it difficult to suggest anime to people. Like I would say, and Brian had also mentioned this, that recommending a slice of life anime is usually difficult because I would say a lot of people would just find that really boring. Yeah. Like I would say, I would just kind of cross out Kill Annie in general and say don't watch that. Cause, yeah, bulk of their catalog is just slice of life shows. I don't know. It's like if a foreigner tried watching American sitcom or something. I'm not sure if they would understand. They try watching. Well, maybe, but a lot of the jokes would just not catch on. Actually, my mom likes Family Matters a lot, and that's really weird. I mean, I told people to watch Friends <laughs> for you know <laughs> some Chandler action. But I don't know if you would like recommend that to a foreigner. No, I would not. I don't know. It's just it's it's a cultural barrier. It is. Like, something that, let's just say, Tomical Market. Pretty interesting, we all like it. Someone who doesn't watch anime, there's no way on God's Green Earth I tell them to watch it. Yeah. Well, because first of all, we're like, where's the plot? Yeah. Hey, uh, tell them to watch Yoka. Actually, my sister doesn't really watch that much anime, but she likes Tomical Market just because it's cute. Alright, Brian. So. If we start getting into people liking stuff just because it's cute. That is something that anime has over other... The cute factor? Yeah. Usually, depending. 
Oh, it depends. Like, could you tell someone to watch Maui, Brian? Like, no. That, that's the. I really like it. It's a. It's, I feel like it's a very high quality story and everything. That's not something I tell someone to watch. Just watch Zen Run Cogram. Uh, high quality storytelling right there. The worst part is, like, High School of the Dead, I don't consider it good, but I, I think it's easier to suggest to someone than, like, Atomical Market. A lot of people seem to like it, though. High School of the Dead. It has a lot of things that are selling points in America zombies and, you know, Violence. fan service. Yeah. I guess that sells out here, so. Yeah, well, if you look at half the stuff that comes out in America. Mm -hmm. So is the question here, like, what you would suggest to yeah. someone who's never watched Is there anime? anything in this season that you would suggest to someone who's never watched anime in before? In this current season? In this current season. Wow, I'm not sure. Um, I could maybe suggest Moggy to someone, because it has, like, it kind of reminds me of Avatar Last Airbender a little. Uh-huh. In the way it's structured, but a little more violent. Isn't Moggy based on Arabian Nights? Yes. Like the actual story of Aladdin. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, and you know, people might find it funny that the guy's named Aladdin. Yeah. I don't know, like, just, like, looking at things that I'm covering, uh, I want to throw them all out the window if I'm talking about telling someone to watch something. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to tell them to watch Ori Shura. They're not going to want to watch a harem. I don't want to watch Hero the Cult Detective and Alba anymore, so get that out of there. I don't... Actually, I don't know if people would like... No, people probably wouldn't like Mendaiji. That one's the borderline. I might tell... It depends on someone's taste. Younger kids, maybe. Well, no, Daniel! Kids. That's... You haven't watched enough to know how too adult that is for little kids. Really? Huh. Yeah. People trying to enslave people for sex and then take over countries and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, not for children. I'm not telling anyone to watch Boku Tomodachi Sukunai next. I don't know if they can handle the raw ferocity of some of that tsundere action. <laughs> Senyu's kind of funny. Yeah. Like... If if you can if you watch maybe Dragon Ball Z you get some of the like comedic references and it's only four and a half minutes it's not hard to digest All, but on the other hand it might be so short that they would lose interest so that one's fifty fifty I'm not telling them to watch Maui and I'm definitely not telling them to watch Bakumatsu I'm still on the fence about Bakumatsu I don't know anything that you guys are covering besides well you're not covering Magi but obviously you're watching it uh I don't know. I'm covering Tomoko Market and Katorasan, and I would say probably Katorasan is more accessible uh -huh. for someone who's never watched anime before. Hmm. Daniel? Good God. I'm covering like Sasumi san and Vivid Red. Those are two things I would avoid suggesting to someone who's never watched Ishida anime. Ishida <laughs> Like Those two are like pretty much geared towards hardcore anime yeah. fans. Uh -huh. I mean,. God, can you imagine someone who's never watched anime in their life watching the first episode of Sasami Sun? <laughs> I think they would give Holy up on crap. anime for the rest of they, their lives. They'd want to burn Japan. <laughs> no, they wouldn't be the first ones. Sorry, Japan. <laughs> Sorry, we love you, Japan. But I love. Well, yeah, I, not, maybe not the government, but we love you. <laughs> um, okay. okay. Hey, Hello, political. Hey, the U.S. government did some. Well, let's talk about that political discussion. I have some unpopular opinions about that. All right. Uh, what about things that you have watched, just in general, anytime? I would suggest one of the classics, like, like Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, uh, well, they also, like, they, they got, they, they aired in the United States, obviously, so they are, to an extent, accessible. Like, I know a lot of people in America watch Cowboy Bebop, that, that's obviously a good one. Mm -hmm. Other things that a lot of people have watched out here, I would say, um, Move Gundam out of there. Yu Yu Hakusho? Yu Yu Hakusho. Also, a point about, I want to make about, about Yu Yu Hakusho. I like the dub better than the sub for Yu Hakusho, like the English dub, because at times when Japan's trying to make tough characters, they have an issue getting good masculine voices. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like the dub for Yu Hakusho is actually pretty good. I think Yu Hakusho is as well. Dragon Ball Z, obviously, that's iconic as being easy, easily accessible to the American public. Yeah. Especially Kai when they cut out the fat from Turned it down. Yeah. The fight scenes are still long. I don't know, but. Something that maybe wasn't as iconic growing up like that. You guys can think of anything? Something that's not iconic? Something that's not on Adult Swim? Something that's not on Adult Swim. Dad I can't say Code Geese anymore. Yeah, something that, something that you don't think has been on Adult Swim. Or for like four kids. Yeah. Uh, four kids, stop it. That's tough. I don't need to see Sanji with a lollipop instead of a cigarette. Uh, I would that's a tough one. Yeah. I think it depends on like what the person, what their perception of anime is. Alright, Brian, since you've watched it, could you tell someone in America to watch Kuroko no Basuke? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Kuroko no Basuke is one of those things where I'm like... Because sports manga and sports anime in general, people find difficult to digest, even like anime fans. But I feel like that one is better. And then again, basketball fans might have a slight issue with it. Midorima can sh shoot full court shots. I honestly think if... Let's just say I was going to suggest a sports series. Crooked is probably the one I would suggest. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the things I'm trying to think of are 
from Tsunami or an Air Gun Adults one at some point. Mm-hmm. So, Full Malakmus was on there. Yeah. Roni Kenshin was on there. Good, if you're, especially if you're like into old samurai movies. Mm-hmm. Oh, Brian, anything that you could think of? I think I could recommend probably Angel Beats to someone mm-hmm. just because it has, it's just really good. It has a lot of appealing factors to it. And it's how complex it is because it has, you know, you have action, you have drama. You have some nice comedy with the rocket chairs. Yeah. yeah. I think that it's more easily accessible than something from Shaft. Yeah. Shaft should just stay out of the American market. Oh, well, Monica is doing pretty well in America, so. Oh, let's not talk about Monica mm. right now. I don't want to be depressed. I was not ready for Monica. Very happy show. Even when you guys showed me all those gifts and stuff, I was not ready. Great opening. I was not prepared for that. Opening really prepares you. I think Shaft's coming out with another magical girl anime coming out this summer. Oh, yeah, no, I, I saw that. Mm-hmm. What if it's going to be anything like Monica? The expectations are going to be so high. People in America, like, they like some intense tear jerking romance. Do you? We, you? People like. Not just me. Do you think people could watch F, A Tale of Memories? No. No, uh, and why not? Well, actually, it depends. If 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 it's someone who likes drama, mm-hmm. then maybe they'll probably like it. When people, maybe I'm biased because I just really like that series. When people think of anime, I'm not sure if they would think of like it's a good way to tell like a good story. A nonchalant person or like someone who never watches anime, they just think they have this perception that anime is just violence or it's just sex. Mm-hmm. And so they have this idea that that's what it is, so they might not know that there's other things, like you have drama or comedy. Yeah, I guess, that, I guess that's just a perception thing, and it's, it's wrong to stereotype, although it's not like stereotyping holds no ground sometimes. A lot, a lot of stuff that we got brought over here was ultra-violence. Like, like, hey, let's give us Dragon Ball Z real quick, yeah. which people didn't really pay attention to a lot of the story in Dragon Ball Z. Honestly, when I was growing up, I didn't, but you know, for like a month, you'd get one fight where you just see punching. Mm-hmm. That's just the view that people are brought up on. It's just stuff like that. And it's unfortunate because I, I would like some more globalization because, you know, there's a lot of good stories. And I would say it's tough for me to say this because a lot more anime series come out per season, I would say, than in America. But I would say like the quality of shows, I, I might be a little biased, but the quality of shows coming out in Japan, I would say is higher than that of those coming out in America right now. Like cartoons or like any show? In general. Like, because... I'm not, I'm not too hard on a lot of the comedies, like, let's say, let's just go comedies, sitcoms coming out in America, I, I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of the stuff. People are like, hey, let's watch Two Broke Girls and stuff. Uh, you guys have seen uh, commercial stuff for I've that, right? I've seen promos, yeah. I'm not a fan. Like, right now, the only new-ish kind of show I like is Go On, and that, that's even, that's more serious than anything right now, uh... In terms of like comedy feel, people love Two and a Half Men. I can't stand Two and a Half Men. I can never. Watch I just it. think it's it's mindless sex, and it's just it's Charlie Sheen. It was it was Charlie Sheen's life, and now it's modified Charlie Sheen's life with Ashley Kutcher. It's funny because most people will think the same about anime. Oh, it's just mindless violence and sex. Yeah, it's kind of funny how that works. And it's rough when the flagship, like, hey, uh, TV's most watched comedy. I watch CBS all the time for football and stuff. Uh, TV's most watched comedy, Two and a Half Men, and I'm like, why are you watching this? Like, what what do you get from this? My mom loves watching reality shows and stuff. I'm like, mom, why watch it? She's like, I, I like watching it. It's, it's funny. They're doing stupid stuff. I'm like, she she watches like Mafia Wives and like Real Housewives. I'm like, how can you? What what value do you get from that? Because growing up, she'd be like, oh, don't watch that. It's not uh, doing anything for you. She she told me don't watch Sesame Street. It it uh, promotes short attention spans and stuff. But I'm like, you're watching Real Housewives, Mom. What the hell? <laughs> Look what you're doing. Her, her favorite show right now is, like, the show about the Amish Mafia. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't know she liked that. It's, it's the weirdest thing. Like, and these are the shows we're getting. And, like I said, maybe I'm biased, but I got quite a few shows on uh, this anime list that I'm digging. And not a lot of stuff in America right now. It's like, I, I even have... Feigning, like, I have uh, wavering interest in sh- continue, continuing shows that are out right now. Like, I- I've been up and down on the Big Bang Theory recently, honestly. I just, I, I don't know. Well, what about it that just kind of... I, I, it's, I'm just, I'm starting to lose interest, and maybe I'm just, I just don't feel like, personally, the comedy's, like, keeping it up for me. Like, I like certain things. Honestly, the only thing I like right now is Sheldon and Amy, uh, stuff that they're going through. Uh-huh. Not even just together, but as characters. I don't really like Leonard's character anymore, and like his interactions with Penny. Really? I, I, I'm not digging it right now. And obviously, this is like a lot of his personal opinion. I don't think I can point out something that you would teach someone when trying to produce and write shows that would say that the quality is down. And obviously, numbers would suggest that it's doing fine. I just personally 
and lose the interest in it. That's that's just the thing. That's reasonable. I just uh, there's a lot of stuff with uh, American television right now that I'm not digging, especially because stuff that I like is getting canceled. Stuff that I, I don't. Speaking of. Speaking of segue, Young Justice getting canceled and Green Lantern the animated series Symbiosis. Let's let's not take sides. Symbiosis. That's the thing. Even you watch Teen Titans, right, Brian? Mm-hmm. The way they ended Teen Titans was ridiculous. The show was doing well, to my knowledge, you know, they and they just cut off, and it's not like they cut off, like, alright, we just defeated the Brotherhood of Evil, here's the movie, that came out years ago, if you guys don't know, I, I don't care, I'm not saying spoilers on that, <laughs> you know, they just defeat the Brotherhood of Evil, cut off there, air the movie, end it, don't go back home, show Terra possibly alive again, and say, yeah, we're not gonna do anything with this, see you later, yeah, two times over. That's kind of bullshit. That was, that was a really horrible uh, place and, to cut. And what I hate most is a bunch of Teen Titans fans on the internet like, Teen Titans Go is coming out. Thank God, Teen Titans is back. No, A, it's not a continuation of the Teen Titans story that we got. B, it's a completely different style. We're going like... And I'm not going to try to tell you that whether or not I think that Teen Titans Go is going to be a good series because, you know, that's left to be said. But it's not the serious Teen Titans that we got before. It's not supposed to focus on the fighting stuff. It's supposed to focus on, like, teenage angst and stuff. I'm like... Like oh, taking man. driver's head. Oh, no. Yeah, like, <clears throat> that's not a continuation of the Teen Titans you had. So it's something completely new. And they're going to be replacing Young Justice with it. And I love Young Justice. Really? Yeah. Oh, all right. So they're taking Young Justice down after two seasons. They're building up to this huge war. There's all kinds of stuff. And <clears throat> it's, it's just... It's hard to watch another successful DC series getting cut down short because Cartoon Network and DC don't know how to handle their stuff. It's, it's just really unfortunate. Did they ever give a reason why they're cutting it? I don't know of any official reasons. I do know that it costs more to air Young Justice and Green Lantern, the animated series, than it will cost to air Teen Titans Go and Beware the Batman. Teen Titans Go and Beware the Batman are the new series for DC Nation that will be replacing the current lineup. And it's unfortunate because I, I didn't like Green Lantern the anime series at first. I'm getting into it. Uh, it's pretty interesting. And the thing is, it has a really good fan base, and Young Justice has a good fan base. Young Justice is, I would say, the more prominent of the two. And even like Newsrama put out their rankings of the top comic book adaptations into uh, cartoons, and Young Justice right now ranks number two, right behind Batman the anime series. And we all know how good Batman the anime series was. So good. Right. I don't know if I would rank, personally, Young Justice that high, not because I don't think it could deserve to be there, but because with only two seasons under its belt, I don't know if it had reached the plot-like progression in order to warrant such a high ranking. Mm -hmm. Like, I, f I feel that a lot of that is based off of projected quality over the long run, even though stuff right now is good. It's just, there's a lot of stuff that could make it great that it can't do right now. And, of course, there's the symbiosis movement, like, people are trying to bring it back. And it's not impossible to bring things back. Family Guy and Futurama came back after yeah. being uh, canceled. On the internet. Family Guy much quicker, obviously. Right. Futurama went to a new station A whole new network and everything. And, like, Brian, you were able to watch Teen Titans. I think you would like him just as you watched it. Yeah, probably. So. I've only seen a few episodes, but I actually kind of liked it. Yeah, it's pretty it good. a good concept. Replacing it with Teen Titans Go just seems odd to me that you're deciding to take, like, this thing that functions better as a short, because it is a short on DC Nation right now, and putting it into a full-length series, and then taking Be Aware of the Batman. First off, DC cannot succeed if all they're going to do is keep taking Batman and promoting that. You have to explore the other things. Green Lantern is a very prominent part of the DC Universe, and I would say a good portion of people don't know who he is, especially when compared to Batman and Superman. And if you're going to take something which the biggest problem with Green Lantern for people, the animated series, was that it was CGI, and replace it with Batman, that's also CGI. I don't get that like line of the thinking. Logic. Yeah. Probably just name brand recognition. But there have been so many Batman movies and series and stuff. I know Batman's popular, but you have to try something new sometimes. Yeah, get I, people into other things. I love Batman, but yeah, I mean, I'd like to see other characters. Mm hmm even like the team stuff with Justice League and Young Justice Teen Titans, you have Robin and stuff. It functions in a world where Batman was a part of this. Robin doesn't exist without Batman. And, I don't know, just seeing good stuff gets, get cancelled really, really gets to me. That just, yeah, that just annoys the fan base. And it's not just America. Daniel, how long have you been waiting for new Haruhi seasons? God, you just had to bring that up. 
<laughs> since 2006, I think. Yeah. It's been about seven years now. The re-airing of the first season was a nice slap in the face. That was, yeah, that was three <laughs> years after the first season. And then we got the movie, which I was extremely happy with. But that was about two, three years now. Mm-hmm. And there's no word yet about a new season. So, you know, all the Harry fans are just on edge. Brian, anything anime, American television you waiting on a new season of? Um, apparently there's going to be an announcement of the new uh, Penguin Drone project sometime next week. A new project? Yeah. He, uh, a couple months ago, sometime last year, Ikuhara, the creator of Penguin Drum, created this website called Penguin Bear Project. And then there hasn't been any actual updates yet. So this is pretty exciting. Is it going to be a continuation or a sequel? Ooh, no, there's no idea what the hell it's going to be about. I've been waiting for more Spice and Wolf, but apparently the third season is supposed to come out this summer. Like, uh, there's there's been some stuff about that. My sister told me about it. I didn't have time to look it up. And that's something I really want to see. Spice and Wolf is... Like, Mal, you reminded me of Spice and Wolf to an extent. Basically just because they talk about old-time economics and stuff. But Spice and Wolf kind of like... It was one of those series that got denied quite a few times when they were trying to publish it because people thought it was too unique. Like, it wouldn't sell. Because no one likes a unique title. What? Well, that's the thing. People that's say... True. People say, let's... The world functions on change and stuff. If you notice things, things pretty much stay the same for giant blocks of time. Like, no matter how much you want new stuff, people are... Like, major companies are almost always going to go with stuff that they know is going to succeed because of history. The entertainment industry basically functions on trends. Right. So, if you're different, you know, it's pretty it's hard a, trying to get out there. Risk. Yeah. Companies will consider it a risk. And see, unlike Twilight, which got denied a bunch of times, and then finally got out there. Should have been denied. Spice and Wolf is actually a good thing that got denied a bunch of times, and finally got out there. People who haven't watched Spice and Wolf should really try it out. I said it's about old-time economics and stuff. Don't let that deter you. It's really good. Like, story story quality is very good. Man, I kind of I kind of took us to DC for a little bit there. That's fine. Sorry, guys. Oh, That's okay. You guys did like uh, Teen Titans, obviously. Yeah. Brian, did you ever watch Justice League Unlimited? No, okay. not really. I know I you. You got you are. That. that was it. a good one. Any cartoons you wish still existed like that? Like back from that way yeah. uh, back then. Way back then. Uh, huh. Kolioko. Kolioko. No. <laughs> <laughs> really, <No>. Daniel? <laughs> Man, I just bought that video game today. It's five dollars. <laughs> Goodbye, I guess. I can play with my arcade stick. What kind of game is it? Did you even read it's it? It's a platforming game. Platforming game. Yes. Really? Do you get to play as um. You need to play as the various characters. I forgot their names. I just remember the guy, the guy with the blonde hair that kind of just spikes up. Oh, God. I just remember those prep, bunch of prep school kids that like to sneak out and do dumb shit. God, I don't know why I watched that. I hated it. I, I, I watched, watched it too. Every day, I hated. I remember hating that show. I would just sit there. I'm just like, Fuck, I hate this show. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm still watching. I'm not changing the channel. I'm not making a move for the remote. I'm just sitting there. God, you must hate yourself. It was that show that. I wouldn't go out of my way to watch, but if it was on TV, I would turn it on. Like, if I was watching yeah. TV. It was one of those shows. <laughs> I thing, didn't hate it, but that's how it worked for me. Same thing with uh, Totally Spies. <laughs> you uh, know, totally Spies. I still watched that even though I didn't like it. Oh, I, I, I hated I it. <laughs> Brian's favorite show. That might say something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I take it back. Yeah. Uh, I hated that show. Oh, dude, when I was I was rewatching Kim Possible on YouTube, like it kept telling me to watch Totally Spies. Like it kept recommending that. God. And um, I caught that every once in a while. What was the other one? Uh, it, it had like blue people. It was like CG. It was way back in like two thousand. But ugly Martians. No, no, <laughs> God no. Um, it was on Toonami. Uh, uh, the blue blue skin, all CG. I would had, never watch something. It, I think like that. the title's like one word. Hacked, uh, something. Wow. Uh, You're losing me even. It more was on tsunami. <laughs> Someone look it up. We all computers. This internet is fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was on tsunami, and that I, was I'm going tsunami. to turn my airport mode off so that other people can use the internet more effectively. Oh. Reboot. God. Reboot. Yeah, reboot. You guys ever watched Reboot? Reboot? I have no idea what that is. Really? I've never heard yeah. of it. Maybe if you've seen like a picture of it. I've probably seen it. Oh, you man. gotta you gotta show me a picture. That was early Toonami. That was like Tom 1 Toonami. I don't even want to see it. Who else remembers IGPX? Oh Unfortunately. man. Unfortunately. Toonami's attempt at an anime. It was alright. I liked it. but um. I've watched worse anime. I'll be honest. I've seen way worse. But I thought it was alright for something from Toonami. Um, it's like F-Zero on steroids. Speaking of Toonami, didn't they also produce... The second season of Big O or something like that? I have no idea. Because, like, there was no second season in Japan, and then, I guess, there was demand for it in uh, North America. So, like, Toonami decided to just go ahead and create her, um, a new season. I remember Big O was... Uh, it was pretty popular over here. I liked it. But I the watched. second season did get weird. It got cancelled. 
Yeah. Didn't have an ending. More of an ending than Bleach. It was like the fucking tomato or something. Did you ever watch me go? Like the I watched the first season. season. I didn't watch the second oh, season. Oh, like there was this whole thing with like the tomatoes and it's just really stupid. More fun stuff on Toonami. It's tomatoes and giant robots. That was that was basically season two. Pretty much watching nothing on Toonami or Adult Swim. Except Naruto. Naruto. First season of Naruto was pretty good, man. I didn't like it. I never jumped on the Naruto hype train. I, I jumped off after seven episodes. You missed out. Yeah. Right, well, First season's say. actually really good, Daniel. I guess. Just, I don't know. It was never my thing. What is your thing? I don't know. Bleach, apparently, at the time. I see. How can you watch Bleach but not like first season of Naruto? I don't know. I just something about Naruto I didn't like. Was it Naruto? Because if if you didn't like Naruto, saying believe it all the time, I understand. No, I I, I I'll believe I think it. That was part of it that ruined it for me. And then I watched like a little bit of the original Japanese dub, uh-huh. and even then I didn't really latch on. I don't know. Uh, early early Naruto is very good. Like it's what it's what makes people actually want to watch Shippuden. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's bad. Right. I, I, I can see the appeal. I just, again, I don't like it. Just my personal uh-huh. taste. Brian likes it. Not this Brian, other friend Brian. Well, well you did like it, but yeah. this other Brian really likes it. Naruto pretty much got me into, like, going out my way to watch anime back in middle school. Man, uh-huh. All the people in high school wearing the headbands. It's Brian now. <laughs> he he the jumped one, on late. The one, the one guy at UC Berkeley just wearing a Naruto headband walking around. Does he ever wear it to class? No, nah, I've never seen him wear it. Better not. Good for him. <laughs> I hope he doesn't. Given the Jiraiya one isn't that bad. It's all about the sound one that I have. I still have that on my hat. Band geek. I guess early Naruto was one of those shonen that I was really into. I, I'd say I'm, I'm having uh, some lack of interest in shonen recently, though. That that style of shonen, I'll say. One, one of the big, like, you mean like the big titles that shonen usually has? Yeah. The big pillars. The big pillars. I mean, I'll always love One Piece. That's my thing. What are the big pillars? It's Naruto, it's Naruto Bleach. Bleach, One Piece. But honestly, Bleach is really dropping off. I'd say Fairy Tale is kind of like come in and take, it, taking, taking the new pillar some, spot. It's a new kid on the block. Especially because Fairy Tale is, is very well written. Like, it's very good, very popular right now. There was there was a time where people thought Beelzebub could knock off Naruto, but that kind of lost steam because number one, Naruto is still extremely popular, even though I think it's taken a step back in quality. And then I would say that Beelzebub is starting to lose its pace for a while. Like I'd say about a month and a half, I had been very concerned about the direction it was taking, and the end, like the very last page of this last chapter, gave me hope, but. It isn't where it needs to be if it wants to become a new big three. Yeah, it, it lost quite a bit of steam in the last arc and a half. Yeah, because like, there's talk about what's going to be the next big titles from Shonen since, you know, Bleach is almost done. Naruto's, I'm guessing it's almost it done? It feels like they... Um, Bleach said last arc. Naruto, even though they didn't say anything, it feels like it's coming to an end. There's, there's been talks that it's going to end fairly soon. And the way it's ending, I don't like. But yeah, uh, it feels like it's going to end. Oh, One Piece will be here forever. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like it's anywhere close to ending, and there's no speculation about it ending or anything, it's just, it's there. As long as Oda's heart's still beating, there will be one piece. That guy needs to sleep, though. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he he, he lives to serve. He needs to see his family. You know what, his family understands. So I should definitely understand. Oh, it's a loving family. It's a very understanding family. Maybe they're One Piece fans. Maybe they want it, too. They forced him out of the <laughs> house to make more One Piece. They're keeping him just to make One Piece. God, there was no One Piece this week. I was very upset. I was going to say, maybe he's dead. <laughs> Don't say that! <laughs> I can't lose One Piece! Can't lose or, Oda. Yeah, I can't lose Oda. You don't understand how attached to the One Piece universe I am right now. I, I say this, but I'm nowhere near atta- as attached to some of these people over in Japan. Yeah. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, there's some big fans over there. Remember uh, Anohana? When, what, what's that, what's the girl's name? The one who uh, was always the follower? Anaru. Anaru. Uh, she goes to that, like, uh, get-together, like, the matchmaking get-together, oh, yeah. and the guy's like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna go home early to watch One Piece. And he's like, <laughs> how did you not know what I was trying to do? One Piece obviously doesn't come out till like, later this week. Yeah, you knew that, <laughs> and you wouldn't be in this situation. Like, you knew I was just trying to get have sex with you. One Piece isn't even on today. How the fuck did you not know that? Like, oh One Piece is that big of a deal. <laughs> Good plot point. Yeah, it's pretty popular. Obviously, I love One Piece, and it's great. The only problem with suggesting it to someone is you're you're playing catch up like nobody's business. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> well, too much. Yeah. I know firsthand. I commend you on your efforts, Daniel. I gave up. I gave up. It was a nice try. <laughs> I tried. I you got tried. To, you got farther than most. I got to a hundred chapters and I just stopped. I couldn't take it. Brian, I understand the fact that you're not going to try. I know my limit. <laughs> 
Uh, if we get uh, on schedule releases for the rest of the month, we're gonna hit 700 chapters this uh, before March. Jeez. Wow. I'm not. There's no way in hell I'm catching up to that. Dude. It took me a month just to do 100 chapters. Reborn, like uh, Kate Kyoshi Hitman Reborn, that was once a really big deal in, the, I guess, the shonen manga world. Uh, Shwanka had told me to read it because I would obviously never read it, uh-huh. and uh, there were 198 chapters out at that time. I read them all like in one sitting. It took me like 15 hours, I think. Well, that that's a while, uh-huh. and I, it's because I like to pay attention. Your, your marathon skills are just sometimes they amaze me. I can't do it. I can never do something like that. Guys gotta do what a guy's gotta do. I don't have the, stump, the stamina anymore. I can barely read one chapter. Catch can, money score, damn it. I can barely watch an episode anymore. Yeah. But I remember I caught up with that. I didn't like the beginning. The middle I thought was nice. It really fell off in the last two arcs. And my god, that ending was the most bullshit ending. I would resent Shawanka if it wasn't for the fact that he also recommended uh, Fairy Tale to me. And I am really into Fairy Tale right now. You have to thank him. Yeah. Thank him for the boobs. The greatness of Fairy Tale outweighs the crappiness of Reborn. If you like Reborn, you really need to like pay attention to the story. Like the action was nice, but really pay attention to the story and how it functioned, please, because that that does not go well. You you guys don't really read a lot of the shonen stuff. No, I don't. <laughs> I try to avoid it like the plague. I understand. I don't really watch action in general that much. Uh, I kind of you stopped. watched all the filler episodes of Naruto. That's true. After, I don't know, after <laughs> that was eighth uh, grade. <laughs> after I started watching anime again last year, just all my interests have kind of changed a little. Like I'm not into, like I'm not even sure if I could watch, like the first couple seasons of Bleach anymore. I know you can't, Brian. I can't. I don't know. Just I don't know. My my interests have differed greatly from the me in what 2008, 2009. The the you that told me to watch Haruhi. The yeah the the me that told you to watch Haruhi and called you up in the middle of the night and said, Hey, Will, Bleach is on. Don't swim. <laughs> You you ruined it, Daniel. I, I could have lived my entire life without ever if I never, watching Bleach. If I never made that phone call, you, if you, where would you be? You need to go back in time and stop yourself. Dude, I was, I was going to sleep. I remember that. And my mom was like, Will Daniel's on the phone. I'm like, why are you calling me at 11 o'clock at night, Dad? I was like, Bleach is on. You gotta watch it. Man, where would you be today if I never called you? I don't know. Happy <laughs> Much more content with life. I fucking hate Bleach. But I, I'm so far, I can't stop reading it. You have no choice but to keep going forward now. It's the last arc. I'm too invested to not know what happens. Yeah, let me know what happens. I'm not I'm not getting there. Ichigo should just die. Better. I, at this point, just kill him. Because he's lost his power so many times. And they just keep giving him new powers. We're done raging. Done, 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 raging. done with uh, Will's angry part of the podcast. These guys have to hear me talk like this all the time. Sorry. Fine. It's funny. I'm kind of riled up there with the bleach talk. Is that it then, guys? Yeah, so we've... Yeah. That's enough raging. That's enough, enough raging. raging. I don't want to talk about bleach anymore. All right. All right. Uh, happy birthday, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Bye. Fifty years. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Just say it, Brian. Tan Joby. <laughs> Tan Joby. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan. I don't know what I was gonna say. Bye.